From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Hillary Pukes, Johnny. How's your time these days? Time to live, time to die, you know. What's up? A claim on a $100,000 policy. I want it investigated. 100000 What kind of policy? Straight life. You sound worried. I am. I think we're going to be taken this time, Johnny. <laughs> Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To Continental Insurance and Trust Company, 657 North Spear Boulevard, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the DeSalle matter. I'd heard of Dave DeSalle. I guess everybody in this country's heard of him at one time or another. DeSalle Television, DeSalle Radio, DeSalle Electronics, DeSalle Appliances, Racetracks, Theaters, DeSalle this and that. But up until the time I talked to Hillary Fuchs about the case, I had never put a man behind the name. Expense account item one, two bucks, two drinks for Hillary Fuchs and myself. We had them in his Hillary office Johnny out of my bottle over his desk. This thing. Just plain worn out with it. <laughs> stuck. <laughs> Ooh, that's some water. Mm. Oh. But I'll tell you this. I'm not going to make a present of $100,000 of stockholders' money to anybody. I wouldn't do that either. Drink your drink. Here's to war. Salute. Now, while that's settling, maybe you'll settle down and tell me what it's all about. Dave DeSalle. Know him? I've heard the name, yeah. Well, he's dead. Drowned four days ago out on the coast. So? Did you ever see our K-Policy series? I've heard of it. Well, the premium's about triple a normal life policy. It's designed only for people with big money. Sure. But it's got a feature that makes those people with money look at it a long time. Uh-huh. This clause isn't anything more or less than the old accident clause paying double indemnity. Broken down, we aren't taking much of a chance. The incident statistics are with us. All right, I'll look it up if I need it. Okay. Three months ago, we insured Dave DeSalle on one of those K policies. Four days ago, he fell off the back of a yacht and drowned, and we're hooked for $100,000. Accidents happen. You betcha, all the time. But I'm not sure it was an accident. At least there's not enough proof in this coroner's report to convince me. You say it happened four days ago? Yes. Has a claim been filed yet? Yes, and the beneficiary is the deceased's widow. Inquest? Inquest, burial, everything. Was there an autopsy? No, there was not. Investigation? Yes, it was handled by the local police in San Ladeo. San Juan? San Ladeo, a little place about 30 miles south of Los Angeles. Four days ago. Why didn't you put someone on it then? I did. Bert Kenyon. Here's his last report. Uh. No evidence available to dispute coroner's verdict of accidental drowning. Recommend claim be honored. Kenyon. Uh, sounds like cold turkey to me. It may sound that way to you, but I still don't like it. I want it warmed up. Now, look, Bert Kenyon knows his way around. And he can miss like anyone else. I want you to go out there and work with him. Cover it all again. Get it to Saul's widow. She stands to gain most by his death. Maybe the two of you can come up with something. Well, what do you do about the claim? Deny liability on the grounds that the accident is not proven. Hillary, you will be sued. I'll take that chance. Fuchs was an old chance taker who had been raised in the insurance business. The kind of man who gave a claim every kind of test, and if it still passed, he sat down and smelled the paper it was written on. And if he didn't like that, he'd take his chance. Expense account item two, $138, plane fare to Los Angeles. Item three, $3, a telegram to Bert Kenyon advising him of my arrival, which turned out to be at 1 o'clock in the morning, 10 minutes ahead of a fog that blanked out the whole area at the airport. Johnny! Johnny Dollar! What? Oh, hey, Bert. Uh, How are you? Johnny, good to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, come on, I got a car. Well, have you got a cigarette? I ran out two hours ago. Ah, uh, sure, man. Uh, here you go. Well, uh, good to see you. Good to see you, boy. The last time I saw Bert Kenyon was July, a year ago, in Dayton, Ohio. He was there working on an arson claim for the National Underwriters. Before that, I'd run into him in Denver, Portland, and Chicago. And we'd worked together for two weeks in New Orleans on the San Antonio case. He sent me a Christmas card every year. I sent him one. We were as close and as far apart as two friends can be. When I saw him this time, he looked tired and thinner. And he lit one cigarette after the other. 
You'll like San Ladeo, Tony. Yeah? How's the hotel? Oh, old Spanish job. Big rooms, fireplaces. Smells kind of damp all the time. You get used to it. Are you... Uh, tired? Yeah. Well, uh, tell me about the claim, Bert. Nothing to tell. Routine so far. Oh, Fuchs was pretty worried about it. He doesn't like the coroner's report. Ah, you know, Fuchs, worry, worry. That's what he gets paid for. Oh, well, that's what we get paid for, too. Okay, okay. On the face of it, I'd question the claim right away. Just in the three months period alone, I'd question it. You still think it was an accident? I think we should pay up and shut up. I'd like to have met this to sell guy, Johnny. Stocks and bonds and pretty blondes. He sure had them all. Where do you meet Mrs. DeSalle? Where do you see the layout? Boy. And Fuchs worrying about a $100,000 claim. Do you know how much DeSalle's widow is worth? Eight million dollars. A hundred thousand dollars means about that much to her. Not that much. Peanuts. You want to hear something funny? Real funny? Go on. DeSalle bought that policy one day at the racetrack at Del Mar. Yeah. Because an insurance broker gave him a tip on a horse. Yeah. <laughs> I can just see Fuchs worrying about his 100000 and finding out about that part. How did you find out about it? Mrs. DeSalle, she told me the story. What about her? Now, what about her? She's the beneficiary. Well, I told you, 100000 doesn't mean a thing to her. Why would she kill him for $100,000? Why not? Fuchs sent you out here to take over because he thinks I lost up, didn't he, Johnny? He sent me out to see if I could give you a hand. He wants us to cover the whole thing again. Wouldn't kid an old pal, would you? I'd never try, Bert. <laughs> I bet you wouldn't. I just bet you wouldn't. In another ten minutes, we were in San Ladillo, a sprawling little town built around a natural harbor. The houses looked expensive, the boats even more expensive. Kenyon pointed out one house on a hill, a three-story affair with an acre or so of lawns around it. He explained it was the DeSalle home. I checked into the San Ladillo Hotel and got a good night's sleep. Next morning, Bert Kenyon and I went over to the statements of everyone who had been on the yacht the night DeSalle went overboard. Then we went out and interviewed everybody again, including Mrs. DeSalle. It's getting awfully dull. You understand we have to do this. All right. Dave and I were having drinks with a few friends. He said he felt like getting a little air. He went up on deck. A few minutes later, someone was looking for him. Mr. Burke. It might have been. Well, that's what's on your statement. All right. Mr. Burke. We couldn't find Dave, and then I remembered he was on deck. We went up there and saw his hat floating on the water. We looked around. We didn't see him. I sent one of the crew to call for help. They fished him out an hour or so later. You were never on deck until then? No, I wasn't. Uh, who were they? You said they fished him out. The police. Someone. I don't know. There were a lot of men. They tried to give him artificial respiration. Well, what did you do? I watched. What else was there to do? Hard thing to watch, Mrs. DeSalle. Your husband just drowned. Yes. Yes, it was. Is that all? Yeah. That's all. Come in. Hi. Well, what's all this? Thought you'd be in bed. Just going over the reports again. Well, what do you think? Oh, I don't know. I'm trying to make up my mind, Bert. About Mrs. DeSalle, the way she looks, the way she acts. I told you she was something. Yeah, sure. Fifty men that sell their souls to be tied up with her one way or another. She had help, Bert. What? She had to have help to kill him. A dozen people swear she was below drinking martinis with him, so someone was up on deck waiting for DeSalle. What have you got to go on? DeSalle swam the English Channel 20 years ago. He should have been able to swim 20 feet to a gangplank. Drunk or sober, he should have been able to do that. I knew about that swimming business. Expert swimmers drown all the time. We both know that. What else? Well, why didn't somebody hear him yell? Maybe he didn't. Everybody lets out a yell in a situation like that, falling or in the water. There were a dozen people aboard. One of them should have heard him yell. Yeah, I guess you're right. All right, suppose he didn't yell. 
But suppose this coroner made a mistake about the bruises on the side of his head. Suppose they happened before he went over the side. Well, it'd be hard to prove now, Johnny. Oh, look, she's got a boyfriend somewhere, Bert. She had to have one. The servants can be gone over. Somebody at the house has seen him. He's called her, sent her messages. He's our boy. We can bring him out in the open. We'll get help from Los Angeles. We'll call the legal department and get them busy. Get permission to exhume the body and have an autopsy. We'll Johnny. bring... What? Let this one go, huh? What? Drop it. It's just lousy enough to get by, Fuchs. We got a good case, Bert. I know. I've known it all along, Johnny. A sellout? Mrs. DeSalle offered me the whole hundred thousand. The whole hundred thousand, Johnny, to let it get by. <sighs> Who helped you do it? I don't know. I wasn't interested anymore when she came up with the offer. Look, what does DeSalle mean to you and me? Nothing. He had a whole life the best it could give him. We can't bring him back. I'll split the hundred thousand with you, Johnny. We'd have a little chance for some things, too. Johnny? Bird. No deal? No deal. Now you're a good dick, Johnny. Stand up. Oh, put that thing away. I've been looking a long time for a mark like this. Now you've lost it up and I have to beat it. Turn around. Bert. So long, Johnny. I went down to my knees trying to hold onto the desk. I saw him stand there a minute, like he might want to help me. And then he was gone. I did everything I could to make my feet, but my legs wouldn't work. And then it was all over. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. Democracy. What does it mean? The word itself is of Greek origin. Demos meaning the people and kratos meaning authority. Thus, in a democracy, the people have the authority to rule themselves. But where does the authority come from? The authority comes from the people themselves. They put it in their constitution, and the constitution can't be changed by anyone except the people. That puts the supreme power of the government of a democratic country right in the hands of the people, and the people elect their representatives to run the government. In that manner, democracy gives everyone equal representation in the government. Democracy provides mankind with its greatest legacy of freedom. Now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the DeSalle Matter. <laughs> Right on the desk was the first thing I saw. It was still on. The window was still open. The room was the way it had been before. I kept thinking about every man having a price and how Bert Kenyon had settled for $100,000. It seemed like a fair price. It also seemed too bad there was no way for him to collect it. There were two of them. A heavy set man about 50 years old and a tall, lean-faced man with dark eyes. They looked me over. Your name Dollar? Yeah. Police, we want to talk to you. My name's Blair. This is Sergeant LaFrida. You sick or something? I bumped my head. How? Never mind. Well, what do you want? We'll ask the questions. What are you doing in San Ladeo? I'm standing around in a hotel room talking to a couple of cops. Just answer up. Don't be funny, fella. I don't feel even a little bit funny. You uh, got a license to carry this gun? Hey, what is this? Have you? Yes. Your meat-handed friend ought to put it down or it might go off. Been fired, Tom? Uh-uh. Meat hand. Uh, That's what I said. I'll remember that. Okay, Oak. Tell us about it. Tell us what you're doing here. And don't waste a lot of time doing it. I'm an insurance investigator. Tell this goon to back away and undouble his fist or I'll break a chair over his head. Are you going to try to be tough, baby? I'm going to try to find out what this is all about. You want me to pop him open to see if he's as tough as he sounds? Behave yourself, Tom. Let's see something that says you're an insurance dick. Top of the dresser. Bring it over, Tom. Sure. Well, wouldn't you 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now tell us what you're doing in town. The DeSalle case. Now you tell you me... You know George you... Kenyon? I know him. I've been working with him. Well, he's been around town four or five days. We haven't seen you. I only got here this morning. You could prove all that, could you? Oh, sure. With a plane ticket, with a hotel clerk downstairs, with a bellhop who brought up my luggage, with a dozen people or more I've talked to today. And tonight? What about tonight? Right here. You could prove that, too? Try the clerk downstairs. There's Kenyon. Where is Kenyon? I don't know. You ought to know. Why don't you sit down, Tom? Okay, okay. Now, when did you see Kenyon last? A couple of hours ago. Now, tell us what you talked about, and don't forget anything. We talked about the DeSalle case. Can you have something new on it? No. Don't hold out on me, boy. This is police business. Tom here is pretty edgy for a cop, but I'll turn him loose on you if I have to, because I haven't got a whole lot of time to waste being sweet. Tom worries me to death. One more minute. Just one more minute is all I'm going to take off this guy. Oh, shut up. I'll ask you again, Dollar. What's new on the DeSalle case? What did Kenyon tell you? The way we look at it, you came out here because something new popped up that might take two guys to handle it. Look at it any way you want to. Blair, you are gonna take this stuff? Never mind! Okay. Get your hat and coat, Dollar. We're gonna see a fella. Not unless I know why. And I mean that. Dollar, your buddy's been killed. What? Canyon. Somebody shot him up an hour ago. I put on my clothes and we went downstairs and climbed into a battered-looking police car. Tom Lafrida drove. I sat with Blair in the back seat. No one said anything. A half a mile out of San Ladillo, we turned onto the main highway and drove to a spot about two miles away, all-night filling station. There were a couple of highway patrol cars there, an ambulance, and men in dark suits who looked the way policemen always look. Wait here. Keep an eye on them, Tom. Sure. Be just a minute. <laughs> He's a soft old gink. I suppose you're hard. I know how to handle pinballs like you. Before we're through, you and me, we'll have it out. Okay, Dollar, get out. Yeah, sure. Tom, put the spotlight on him. Okay. Good. Now, Posey. Posey, take a good look at this man. You ever seen him before? No. Look good. Take your time, boy. No, a man I saw was shorter by this much. He wasn't as husky. Okay. You go on back to your place there and get some sleep, boy. That all? There'll be more by morning. Go along now. Sure. Night. What was all that? Tom, get out. You sure. stick around here with Dick and Wally. Okay. You're the boss. You get in the front, Dollar. You're lucky. Suppose he didn't recognize you. I suppose I am. Why? An hour ago, Posey's pumping gas. He hears three or four shots off in the dark. Then a car starts up and gets out of there real fast. Then Posey sees your pal Kenyon stagger out across the highway, full of lead. Kenyon drops dead right in front of the station. That's him they're mopping up now. We had half an idea you might have been the man beaten in the car. That's a dumb idea. Yeah, he was shot close up, like it was somebody we was just standing talking to. An old friend. You're an old friend of his. Clear, you got it all wrong. Huh? We haven't been friends for three hours. His full name was George Blair. He'd been on the Los Angeles force 12 years. Then they retired him in half pay when a holdup man shot off part of his right foot. He'd taken the San Ladillo job because it was the only police force he could find that would take a man who limped more than a little. Expense account item four, 20 cents coffee for Lieutenant Blair and myself. I don't know. Maybe he went at you the wrong way in that hotel room. That's my fault. But a man's been murdered, and I get excited about things like that. I don't blame you. No hard feelings? No. As long as I don't have to do business with your boy, Tom. Yeah, I got Tom LaFrieda and three other boys. None of them worth the press in their pants. I need help, darling. What? This town's popping open tonight. Your buddy got it, and it's tied in with this DeSalle thing somewhere. You sure he didn't have anything new for you? No. Mm. You wouldn't want to tell me about that bump on your head, would you? Not right now, no. 
My boys are so green, they tromped all over the boat the night the sail drowned. They loused up anything that might have helped me to find out how he went over the side. They banged his head against the dock a few times, bringing him in. I couldn't tell if the bruises were there before or after he was in the water. You don't think the sail was accidental? I was murdered. She had somebody do it. Well, why didn't any of that come out in the coroner's report? My coroner runs a drugstore when he isn't being a coroner. If you feed him enough scotch, he'll tell you whether somebody's dead or not. He don't know from nothing. You know, the thing that kind of got me was this Kenyon. He went along with that coroner's report. I know that. You both know that. All right, I'll lay it on the line. I need help, Dollar. If I'm going to get anything done, find out who killed Kenyon, and get at this to sell thing, I need help. All right, I'll help you. I was hoping you'd say that. More coffee? No. Dollar. What? You can start by telling me about that bruise in your head. <sighs> Kenyon. He sold out, did he? Yeah. To Mrs. DeSalle. He covered up for her in the reports he sent in. Hmm. A man back in Hartford got suspicious and sent me out to make a recheck. Yeah, I guess something like that. No dummies, those claims, men. Look, uh, who did he say was in on it? He didn't say. I don't think he really knew him. At least not any more than you and me. Mm. No wonder you didn't want to talk up that kind of news. Kind of hurts, doesn't it? Like having a bad cop around. You should know. I know. Well, how do you feel? Mister, I feel lousy. A friend of mine's been shot. What's more, he died a bum. Well, I'm talking about dropping in on people while the smoke's still hanging around. Mrs. DeSalle? Yeah. Let's go. It was about a quarter to seven in the morning when we left the diner. By 7.30, we were winding up the driveway to the DeSalle mansion overlooking the ocean. Claire mumbled things about the fog lifting and what a nice day it would be. I smoked cigarettes and looked and watched the contented smile he kept on his face. Well, what do you know? Mm. Tommy Lafrida's car. Oh, what does that mean? Well, let's find out. Tom was off duty at 6 o'clock, as far as I know. Ah, I told you it was going to be a nice day. Yeah, you did it then. Nice place. The only thing nicer is Buckingham Palace. Mm. Mr. DeSalle picks up all these little knickknacks when we probate that will. The boat down there, everything. Nice. Yes? Mr. DeSalle, please. At this hour of the morning, she's still asleep. Yeah, uh, we kind of guess she might be in bed. You tell her the police are here and want to talk to her. Police? Now you got it. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, just a moment. That's you, Blair. Hello, Tom. I'm waiting to see her, too. Thought she might have a little something to say that would help in that Kenyon killing and be willing... You remember Mr. Dollar? Mister? That's what I said, Tom. What is this? He's giving me a hand. You trust him. Better than I do you. What kind of a crack is that? No crack. Just that you're always talking and you ought to be listening. Besides that, you've been drinking again. Uh, Go on, get your hat and get out of here. Don't I just me, gave man. you an order. Beat it. Okay. Oh, he'd like to kill somebody, that bird. I'm not so sure he didn't. You got a gun in that coat? No. Take mine. What? I don't like him being here. It just came to me. He was the first one down at the dock the night the Sal got it. The first one. Her boyfriend? Could be. I can't awaken Mrs. DeSalle. You'll have to come later. Well, we'll handle that part. Which room is hers? But you can't come in here. Which like room? Just, uh, uh, top of the stairs, the first door. Well, you run along and buy yourself a cup of coffee. Come on, Dollar. You can't go up there at this hour of the morning and break in on her. Mrs. DeSalle. No. Hey, get the light switch. Yeah. Come near me, please. Don't come near me, please. Please. Oh, please, I won't tell. I won't tell anyone. Mrs. Sal, I just... Beaten up. Good Lord. Please. Oh, please don't. Look, Mrs. DeSalle, we aren't going to hurt you. Tell us who did this to you. Tell us why. <laughs> Tom LaFrida? Was it Tom? Tom helped you get rid of your husband. Is that right? We know that's right. Now, what about Kenyon? Tom killed him. Lafrida killed him. Why? 
You wanted money to get away. Tom said it'd be easier. It's easier to kill him off and let him go. Tom did this. Why? He said people be around to see me. Not to, to talk about anything. Not to talk about anything. This is George Blair. Get an ambulance over to the cell place fast. He said he loved me. He never loved anything, anything in his life. <laughs> you big fat pig. Turn around and get it. I'll warn you, Tom. Dollar's got my gun. He's next. You look at mine. You all right? Okay. Here's what in the ceiling. You? Okay. Yeah, he's gone. What made him, Dollar? What made him? All these knickknacks and her. <laughs> Expense account item five, 25 bucks. One phone call to Hartford. I told Hillary Fuchs the whole story, and he promised to send out the necessary legal aid. Item six, ten dollars. Flowers for Bert Kenyon. Item seven, two dollars. One drink. To one good cop with a bad foot. The drink cost a buck. The glass cost a buck. The drink for the good. The smashed glass for the bad. Oh, yeah, it was hammy, but it made me feel... Expense account total, $416. Remarks, none. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, one of the sweetest old characters I ever met. And with him, one of the cleverest killers. Join us, won't you? Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood. It is written by John Dawson and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Harry Bartell, John Stevenson, Will Wright, James McCallion, and Ben Wright. Musical supervision is by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Dan Coverly speaking. Johnny Dollar has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.